What is up guys? It is time to take things to the next level. We've learned a lot on Google Sheets, but now we're going to upgrade and learn how to use Python. Python is a coding software. I'm going to walk you step by step how to not only download Python onto your computer, how to download an IDE, and then actually pull stock market data. It's going to be really simple, only five lines of code guys. That's all it takes to start to pull some data. And as long as this video does well, I will create more content learning how to use Python so we can start tracking our money in a whole new level. Before we jump onto the computer, make sure to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't already, check out all of my links below, go to my Patreon if you want to support my work. But guys, let's jump on the computer and dive right in. All right, guys, now that we're on the computer, the first thing you want to go to, if you're a complete noob and have no clue how to code or you don't have anything, uh, any coding program the best program to use is python that program this coding program is meant for finance and it has all of these great libraries to pull data for uh for the stock market so what you want to do is go to python.org forward slash downloads and what you want to do is download this right here download python will be 3.9 something uh, but it's pretty much we're downloading Python 3. So go ahead and you want to click download. It'll download and then you're going to want to uh, you're going to want to open that and then you're going to want to uh, install it. I'm not going to install because I already have it on my computer. Uh, cancel out of that. Uh, but then after you have Python and after that's set up, you now need some kind of text program to interpret all the code. There's a lot of different programs. There's stuff like Jupyter Notebook. Uh, you can just use the simple command in your computer, but one of the most popular ones, one that I like is PyCharm. PyCharm is a very popular one. I think it's very easy to use and it already has a lot of the libraries already within the program to make it even easier. So what you want to do is then download PyCharm as well. Again, I already have this on my computer, but just go through the prompts and it's, you want to go to jetbrains.com forward slash PyCharm. I'll have both these links in the description. But once it is all set up, what you're going to want to do is locate where you have your PyCharm application and open that up. All right. So once we open up PyCharm, uh, you'll get to a screen like this. And essentially what we want to do is go to file and we want to do a new project. So you're going to create a new project, you can name it, whatever that doesn't matter. Uh, and you're going to hit create and it's going to ask if you want a new window or this window, or maybe you don't even have this message and you already have a window set. I'm going to create a new window. So we are starting brand new, fresh. We're both on the same page here. It's going to create the virtual environment, download everything it has to. And once this loading bar is done, Good. It should look like this. Okay. And this is just a little sample script. Uh, this is pretty much what you should have here. Uh, what we want to do is now create a new project or create a new file. And to do that, we're going to go back up to file and we're going to hit new. So you hit new and we want a new Python file. So click on this and we need to name it. So we're going to name this stock chart because that is the data we are going to be pulling. Uh, these five simple lines of code really to get you into the uh, world of Python and learning how to start to code. I want to keep it really, really basic right now because guys, we could get into a lot of different lines. We could, I'm talking about hundreds, if not thousands of lines, multiple files interacting with each other. There's so much we could do with it. Uh, but again, baby steps, and you know this is for super beginners right now uh which i'd still consider myself pretty much a beginner just because there's there's just a world of knowledge when it comes to coding but what we want to do now now that we have this uh we want to now install certain libraries so it's not like we could just like say like pull from you know pull from yahoo finance and it knows exactly what we're talking about or where to go that's not how it works we need to actually install libraries and that's how it's going to pull from certain things. Okay. So how are we going to install libraries? You want to go back to file. You want to go to settings. Okay. And what, 
And what you want to do is we want to go down to project, right? Because this is our project, Python project one. You see that right here? And that's up here, Python project one. And then we're in our stock chart file. So we want to go to here, you know, maybe drop down if yours isn't drop down. You want to go to Python interpreter. So you type that and then you can see what's installed. We have pip install and we have setup tools. Now what's really cool about an IDE like uh, PyCharm is it makes it much more user friendly to download libraries. If you're not using PyCharm, it's a little bit more hard. You need to actually go into the command function of your computer. I would consider that a little bit more advanced. This is just much more user friendly. So you're gonna go to this little plus sign down here, click on that. And then up here, we're gonna type in Y finance. So type that in. There it is, Y finance. And description, Yahoo Finance market data downloader. So this is gonna be pulling market data from Yahoo Finance. You're gonna go down here to install package. And the beauty is when you're working on a file, you only have to do this once. Uh, once we download this, we have access to this library, it'll work, and then it's off to the races. We could pull whatever data we want from Yahoo Finance. And guys, there's a lot of data. We're just gonna be creating a really simple chart. Again, this is just to get our foot in the door and understand what we are doing. Uh, but after we have that, what we wanna now do is import what we just installed. Just because we installed it doesn't mean we know to now put it into our actual file. So we have to import that. And this is how coding works. Again, if you are someone who does code, you know exactly what you're doing right now. And this is pretty easy, but I'm talking to all the novices that have no clue what they're doing. So what we wanna do is import Y finance. And there it is because we installed it. Now it's here, right? So we're gonna click on that Y finance as YF might be asking, why are we doing that? Well, this just makes it easier and this is best practice. You'll see a lot of people doing this and it just saves time when we're creating really big files and we have to have a lot of lines. We don't wanna to have to type out Y finance each time. Instead, we can just type out YF and the code knows, okay, you mean Y finance. So it saves time. Now we're gonna hit enter. And now for line two, what we want is to now pull data from Y finance. So we're going to do data equals yf dot download. So now we are downloading from Y Finance. And look, guys, this looks just like Google Sheets for all you guys that don't know what you're doing yet. Uh, it's asking what ticker, what's your start date, what's your end date, what's your action. There's all this different stuff. Uh, we click on next tip. Look at that action, uh, threads, group by. There's all this information that we could pull. Uh, let's see, sort by name, quick definition. And you could read into this, guys. You can see how it gets very advanced very quickly. Uh, but again, we just wanna keep it very simple right now. That's my goal. All we wanna do is create a little chart. That's it. And then we can get into more advanced stuff in later videos. So let's pull, what ticker do we want? How about Apple? So A-A-P-L, which is the ticker on the outside of that quotation hit comma, and now we need to pick a date range, right? So let's do, how about 2020-01-01, or how about while I'm recording this, it's actually the third, so dash 03-20, dash because it's 320 right now. Go on the outside of that quotation, hit comma, and now hit quotation, 2021, dash zero three dash whoops we don't want to be on the outside of that quotation yet so 2021 dash zero three dash 20 close that quotation hit enter okay good so now what do we have here we are saying we want to download data from yahoo finance we want to download apple from 2020 march 20th to 2021, March 20th, so a full year. And now it's in Python, we have that data. If we were to hit run, here, let, let's actually hit run and see what happens. It runs and it's complete, but we don't have a chart or anything. And that's because that data is now stored in Python, but now we need to tell Python what we want to do with that data. Do we wanna see maybe 
the 52 week high, the 52 week low. Do we want to average that data? Do we want to create a chart? Which yes, that's what we want to do right now. We want to create a chart. So we need to tell Python that's what we want to do. So to do that, we're going to go to line three and we need to import our matplotlib. So import mat plot and look, there it is, matplotlib. So type that in dot pi plot. This is a part of matplotlib. We need that, okay? As plt, enter. So this is saying, okay, import matplotlib as plt. That's, that's pretty much just like this as well. We are taking this long name and making it three letters. So it's easier for us to type. Go down to the fourth line. And now what are we gonna do with that? Great, now that we have this plotting software, how do we wanna use it? Well, we wanna pull data. So again, if we're saying data, this, right? This equals data. So when we type in data, we're actually technically typing all of this in. We're saying this is gonna equal this. So data dot close, where we want a capital C, close dot p l o t open and close parentheses all right so this is saying take the data take all of the close prices of the data and now we want to plot that okay but we're not done we have one more line we now need to tell python to plot it so plt dot show open and close parentheses now this is saying take that data and now show us it and look guys five lines that's all it takes and if we hit the run button we can hit the run button here or we can go to run up here and hit run here and we can make sure we're running from the right file we don't want to run from main because main was that sample file we want to run for our stock chart let it load and boom look at this here's apple this is apple's current trend if we x out of this we can change this instead of apple let's change it to how about gme GameStop had its crazy run up and everything. Let's see what that chart looks like. Look, there we go. There was the short squeeze. There was the sell off. There was uh, what people are calling the gamma squeeze. Now that's slowly starting to sell off. What's another thing we could type in How about PayPal, my favorite stock. Let's see what that chart looks like right now. There it is. And guys, we could mess around with the dates. How about instead of 2020, we want to start from 2017. When did I first start investing in PayPal? It was 2017. It was back in, I think, sometime in August. Well, we'll say September to play it safe. We'll say September 1st. Let's see what that chart looks like. Hit run. Look at that. Now we could chart this. We could start to create charts. And this is only five lines, guys. We can start to create stuff that are hundreds of lines. We could make bots in these programs. We can make these very intricate screeners to find certain stocks. Maybe we want to find all the stocks with a certain PE ratio and maybe a certain, I don't know, technical analysis. If it's below the 200-day moving average or above it, we could start to piece this all together and then create screeners and get really advanced in it. But I just wanted to start you guys off with something super simple, something like this, where now you know how to pull data in Google, uh, in Python. Uh, let's let's do Square. What did Square look like back in 2017? Very similar to PayPal, which is not surprising. But this is it, guys. This is what I'm going to leave you with at first. Very easy tutorial just getting your feet wet on how to start coding in python and you can see it's very similar to google finance i mean instead of just typing in certain cells and pulling stuff we're actually creating a file and typing this all in and i mean we've done harder things in google finance so coding really shouldn't be too intimidating or anything as you can see right here very very simple stuff to actually start to create something all right and that's it that is not bad at all Pretty simple, learning how to pull data from Python. I really want to start to expand on this. Maybe we could build some screeners. 
Uh, maybe we could build some watch lists, maybe even some bots to trade for us. I have a lot of plans for Python, as long as this video does well. If you guys like this, I'll create more content like this. But guys, again, make sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. As always, I will see you guys in the next one.